Hello everyone, my name is Thor Young and I'm a moderator with Bear Bull Traders. Today we are starting a new series that has been highly requested by our entire community. That series is going to cover all the major topics on VPA, one at a time. A lot of programs you find out there teach you that if you learn a specific special pattern that you'll be able to consistently create profits. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. But you know it's not that easy, right? If it was, everyone would be able to do this after a 30-minute online course. At Bear Bull Traders, we preach the long road and shortcuts aren't going to get you there. In order to be a good day trader, you need to be able to master momentum. You need to be able to learn how to identify which stocks have the highest probability of giving you the largest percentage moves you're looking for to make a solid profit. If you're only trading with patterns, then you're only looking at the micro without considering the macro. Because of this, you're going to constantly get stopped out on trades. Confused? You'll wonder why the pattern you're trading isn't working. It's not working because factors outside your pattern are affecting the stock's ability to reach your target. In this series, we will help peel back the curtain, exposing the big players. Utilizing tools like VPOC, volume, and candle formations, we can isolate the orders of the big players as they move in and out of their positions. As they do, we can use their large liquidity to our advantage and dramatically increase our probability of success. From the early 1900s, giants like Charles Dow, Jesse Livermore, J.P. Morgan, and Richard Wyckoff forged the strategies we still use today. Fast forward to Richard Ney in the 70s and Andy Cooling in the 2010s, what do all of these great traders and authors have in common? They all used volume and price to anticipate where the market was headed. Before, they had the ticker tape. Today, we have a computer screen. Even though our technology has advanced, the principles that drive the market actually have not. It's driven by demand, and demand is volume. Today, with a modern trading system having so much information at our fingertips, we overcomplicate the most basic of principles. Is the stock I'm trading actually worth trading? Or am I just feeding the market makers? This series is going to cover all the major aspects of VPA you need to understand in order to start adding it into your trading. The goal? To help you eliminate emotional trading by being able to read the price action so you feel confident about your entry and the ability to hold it. In this edition, we are going to be covering the VPA anomaly. Before we get started, I'd like to take a quick moment to remind everyone that if you enjoy this content, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that beautiful bell so you can get notified when the next edition on this series becomes available. And now, on to anomalies. In VPA, we believe in many principles that are similar to physics, most specifically relativity and momentum, or inertia. Like relativity, we expect that each action will have an equal reaction. If a large bar moves a certain distance, we expect a certain amount of relative volume. If the price doesn't move very much, we expect that to be associated with low volume. Whether the price goes up or goes down makes no difference. If the price is moving, we expect volume behind the move. However, this is not physics. The laws can be broken, and when they are, we are given massive clues into the moves that are about to happen. Although VPA is useful, in many areas, gaining the ability to recognize these anomalies will be a vital addition to your skill set. Before any major move happens, an anomaly will present itself. Continuations, reversals, it's all the same. So what exactly is an anomaly? To make it simple, it's a candle that forms under volume that isn't consistent with the rules of momentum and relativity. In the diagram to the left, at the top of the trend, we have a shooting star. When using VPA, we are more concerned with the body of the candle than the wick when it comes to buying and selling. The wick does weigh in on some other factors, but in this instance, 
What is important is where the candle closes. We have a candle on very high volume that managed to only move a couple of cents. For all that effort, the stock price not only didn't go up, it actually lost ground. If this stock was going to continue up, this candle would engulf and break through the selling level. The fact that it has failed to do so speaks loudly. The stock is experiencing a lot of selling pressure and is likely to fall in price soon. The same thing can be said of a wide range candle on low volume. You can see the hammers charted in the diagram on the left. Each hammer is exactly the same and provides little information other than the price sold off and was bought back up to close near the opening price. However, once you add in the volume, the hammer candle becomes one of the most telling candles in VPA. With low volume, a hammer shows weakness or price testing. With average volume, a hammer shows continuation in the current trend. On high volume, a hammer can show a lot of strength or even signal a complete reversal in the stock's direction. Without volume, we are missing so much of the picture. Imagine you're in a trade and see a hammer near the top of a range. Because the price went down and came back up, you assume the price action is strong. However, what you didn't notice was the volume was very high. At the top of a trend, this means the sellers are stepping in and the buyers are starting to fade. Shortly after, the price will likely begin to fall back to a price where the buyers are more interested. You would have been trapped long at the top of a range hoping for a breakout. You just bought the maker's shares for the most expensive price possible before the price dropped back to the lows of the days. This is where we are giving up so much of our money. We think a stock is strong, so we buy in anticipation of a breakout, only to get trapped buying a stock that is overbought. Soon we will stop out and sell the stock right back to the makers, of course, at a hearty discount for them. If we had watched the volume, we would have seen the declining interest and instead leveraged a short position for the return trip down. To our next chart, again we see how VPA can take what is an otherwise ordinary looking candle and turn it into something much, much more. Like the hammer candle, the long-legged doji is very common, but depending on the volume associated with it, you can expect the following price action to vary dramatically. On low volume, the doji simply shows the stock is resting. The price is not moving much at all, which is what you would expect on low volume. On average volume, the doji reads as indecision. Because there is still a good amount of volume coming in, we can assume the price is consolidating and is certainly not resting. Transactions are occurring, but the price isn't going anywhere. This should draw your attention to your position. Most often, this happens when the overall market is declining on an otherwise strong stock. Because the market is going the other direction, speculators have temporarily lost interest. If the price can hold and the market starts to gain again, you could see a break back up. Or, if the market loses more ground, sellers could start to really overpower the price. The last candle is extremely important, and we will be using it quite a bit. An extremely high volume candle that results in a narrow range bar is a massive anomaly. For all that effort, the price didn't go anywhere at all. As most often referred to as a spinning top, because it's often at the top of a trend and resembles the children's toy, it shows a massive battle occurring between the bid and the ask. This candle is one of the most consistent reversal indicators available and is a part of our big three items when we, that we need for a climatic reversal. We will cover that in a future edition coming soon enough. As you can see, VPA adds a third dimension to the chart, a new depth into the price action. The narrow spread candle is another commonly misinterpreted candle. Most see it as shown to the far left. On low volume, the narrow spread candle, regardless of the body's color, shows validation in your current trend. All trends need to ebb and flow, and as long as the pullback is on below average volume, you should feel comfortable holding your position. Remember, a big ship takes time to turn, 
but first you need to start the turn, and that takes a lot of effort. So seeing the stock retrace without a lot of pressure is a good thing and poses no immediate issue. Also, if you're looking for an ABCD pattern, this is a great candle to watch. If your engulfing candle ends and you start to pull back and it occurs on below average volume with a narrow spread candle, then you can feel pretty confident that ABCD pattern will, uh, will ultimately be effective, barring any sudden market changes, of course. For most, that is the end of the story, but with VPA, it's just the beginning. If it takes a lot of effort to move the price, then what happens when a lot of effort occurs but the price doesn't move very much? You've likely already identified this as another anomaly. Seeing this amount of volume coming in and having the price stall without wicking means there is a wall in front of the price. Even the wick can't get through. At this point, we can make the assumption that a possible reversal in price is setting up. This is a significant amount of effort being put in, and since we aren't proceeding forward, the only assumption is that can, we are going to start heading back. Keep your eye out after seeing this anomaly. You are likely to see a hard reversal, and soon. The same concept can be applied to wide range candles. Just reverse it. A wide range candle should form with a lot of volume. If the price moves up, a large amount but does it on low volume then we have an issue and are likely trading into a trap. As we conclude this edition, as a bonus I thought I'd toss in the VPA behind the hanging man candle. Like the shooting star, VPA exposes the issue with an anomaly. There are many thoughts about why it's called the hanging man. <laughs> Perhaps it's simple like the game hangman or is it named because of the candle's intent to trap as many traders as possible while giving the false hope of a continued move up? The candle occurs at the top of a bullish trend. The stock price will most often achieve a key level or breakout only to fall, fail back slightly and close below the level. In the next candle, the price will drop rapidly on high volume and then get bought up to close in a narrow bar. Combine these two together within this red square and you basically have a spinning top on high volume. If the price is being tested for another move up, I would expect this to happen on low volume like discussed with the hammers as a low volume test. At the bottom of a trend this anomaly could signal a lot of strength, but at the top this hammer is an anomaly and it's very likely we are about to see the price changing direction. To conclude, I wanted to go ahead and throw up a chart for you guys to use. You can either pause the video if you would like um, so that you can look through the chart and see all the different things I put in here. What I mainly wanted to demonstrate on this chart is that all of the major moves that are happening on AMD throughout this day are happening throughout these ranges that I have set in blue lines here. But notice, as we move up and down through these ranges, volume anomalies are signifying the moves. We come down here, we have a climatic volume event before we move back up in the direction. Now notice we came up here, break, and we do a pullback. And when we do a pullback, we do this on nice low volume before we ignite and move back up on bigger volume. Right here, we see a low volume test candle that comes back and tests the top of this range before moving up and right here we can see a perfect example of a hanging man we have a candle that pushed out of range came back into it only to go down on higher volume get bought back up close and then to drop hanging mans don't always mean it's going to be a complete reversal it's just something you should be aware of to make sure we're not going to go back in we managed to consolidate this range on medium volume and then look, as we sold off near here and hit the 100 SMA, you can see the ignition on larger volume showing that we are starting to move back up. All throughout the day, paying attention to the volume, you can see the stock ebb and flow and move up and down. Well, that is the conclusion of this um, edition. I hope everyone really enjoyed it. I'm going to be bringing out new editions every week, maybe every few days, depending on the level of the topic I'm going to cover. If there's specific things you all would like to see in the next edition, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. 
If you have any specific comments or questions about this video, also feel free to comment and I will try and hang with these videos as much as I can and stay active and engaging with you on those. Again, I hope everyone appreciates and enjoys the video. I certainly appreciate all of you for watching it and being interested in my content. I hope you all have a great evening and a great profitable trading week to come. And as always, keep it green.